She sits atop a twisted throne, holding onto a kingdom ripped apart by chaos. Still, she remains vigilant and callous, determined to rip out the corruption by its root. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're breaking down every known secret of the Red Empress. If there's one thing we know, it's that Remnant 2 is filled with incredible secrets. We've been obsessed with this game, covering as much ground as we can with each and every video. Today, we're going deep and helping you understand a string of secrets so epic it took us dozens of hours to unravel. Fair warning, there are spoilers throughout this video, so if you'd rather explore the Yeisha storyline yourself first, try your own hand at all the puzzles, then come back to the video. I wouldn't blame you. First, understand that you'll need to complete Yeisha multiple times to unlock all of the secrets we're talking about in this video. You can simply re-roll Yeisha in Adventure Mode for another crack at the mystery, so you don't need to do this in Campaign Mode. To start, you'll want to re-roll until you begin with the Red Throne tile set. This will give you access to the Red Empress and the Corruptor World Boss timeline. You'll want to make your way to the Throne Room. There, you'll immediately have a choice to make, and I think it's worth pointing out that almost every dialogue interaction within Remnant 2 has consequences. Unlike other games, your choices actually matter here, and how you respond to a situation could drastically change the outcome and the loot you receive. We also want to make sure you have all context needed to unlock every secret of the Red Empress, and that means quickly discussing the Corruptor World Boss, since you'll be fighting it multiple times to complete all of these secrets anyways. If you kill the boss the standard way, which means killing the Corrupted Guardian at least once before killing the Corruptor, you'll receive the crafting material Twisted Lazarite, which can be crafted into the Twisted Arbalist, a classic throwback to the Ricochet Rifle from Remnant from the Ashes back in Ward 13. If you didn't already know this, each world boss has one or multiple alternate kills. In the case of this world boss, the alt kill requires that you don't kill the Corrupted Guardian even once. You can still attack the hands, but if you deactivate or temporarily kill the Guardian, you've negated the alternate kill. If you manage to do this correctly, you'll be rewarded with the crafting material Hollow Heart, which can be turned into Stonebreaker, a melee greatsword back in Ward 13. To access the first set of secrets, you'll need to immediately insult the queen, prompting a fight with her guard. If you fail in your attempt to kill these hulking elites, you'll wake up in a Yeshin prison. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's the only way to end up in this section of the map. When you wake up, you'll be deep underground. Explore the area, and you'll eventually come to this room. Lying there, right for the picking, is the Royal Broadsword, your first of many secrets throughout this video. When you eventually make your way back to the surface, you'll notice that the throne room is closed off to you. Outside will be the quote-unquote queen, and she'll command you to continue your quest to kill the Corruptor. Once you defeat the world boss in this timeline, you can return to her, and she'll reward you with Zohi's Ring, which increases mod duration by 15%. Note that all other interactions, everything we talk about after this, will not be available during this particular playthrough, so you need to re-roll to scoop up all of the remaining loot. Now, if you happen to defeat the guards during the first encounter, the quest will instead continue as normal, having you directly speak with the queen in the throne room. So in this case, you won't have access to those first two pieces of loot we talked about, but the throne room will remain open. The choice is really up to you here. If you're cordial with the queen from the beginning, you won't ever have to fight her guards and the quest will continue on as normal. At this point, you'll want to continue along the main story, progressing through Yesha organically. Eventually, you'll end up in a tile set called the Widow's Court. There, you'll find a dead elite guard with an ornate key lying next to him. A note nearby describes the queen's lockbox. This dead guard can appear anywhere amongst the roots, so you'll need to search around just a little bit. To find the lockbox itself, you'll need to travel through the tunnels underground near the waterfalls. Just to the left of a treasure chest is an illusionary wall. Move through the wall and follow the path and elevator until you reach the queen's chambers. There, on the table, is the lockbox. At this point, you have a couple options how you want to proceed, and you only get one shot at this per run, so pay attention. If you return the ornate lockbox unopened to the Red Empress, she'll reward you with the Red Doe Sigil, which increases relic healing effectiveness by 30%, which doubles when the wearer's health is below 50%. There's something neat you need to know about this amulet. If you equip it and then walk near the massive Red Doe and Ravager statue located in the Widow's Court towards the back of the zone, up to the top right of the ruins, a stone staircase will reveal itself.
walk down and claim the quest item, Rotten Thane Fruit. Inspect the fruit and begin rotating it. Look for a section that's rotted out until you see a small white circle. Once it appears, interact with the fruit and you'll receive the Ghost Shell Ranged Mutator. This thing is actually nuts. After three consecutive weak spot hits, it'll increase the damage of your next weak spot hit by 20%. At level 10, it'll also increase weak spot critical chance by 15%. Huge DPS build potential here. But wait, isn't there another Ravager statue in the Forgotten Grove? You better believe it. This time, you'll actually need the Ravager's Mark, which you can get by killing the Doe instead of reviving it at the start of the Ravager World Boss Encounter. Keep in mind, that is a different tile set and a different world boss, so that's why we're saying you're going to have to do Yesha multiple times. By equipping this amulet in front of the statue in the Forbidden Grove, another secret staircase will reveal itself, rewarding you with the Fruit of Death. This presents as a consumable, so you might be wary about just eating it without knowing all the ramifications. By eating the fruit, you die. That much is clear from the lore text, but the fruit persists through death. Take three bites and you'll receive an elusive relic, the Lifeless Heart. On use, this heals 30 health over 0.5 seconds. The kicker, though, is that your relic capacity is doubled. Pair this with a couple relic upgrades at Wallace and Kayula's Ring, which also increases your relic capacity, and you've got a seriously potent combination. All right, that's one option. Next up, if you use the ornate key to unlock the ornate lockbox, you'll receive the Thane Seed. If you return this to the Empress, she'll reward you with the Burden of the Rebel Ring, which reduces skill cooldowns by 15%, but also reduces relic use speed by 25%. Your final choice is to open the ornate lockbox and keep the Thane seed, not returning it to the Empress at all. You can then take that seed back to Ward 13 and then plant it in the patch of dirt near the gardens. Eventually, it'll sprout a Thane tree sapling, which will, over time, grow into a full tree. The tree will only grow if you're not in Ward 13, so either leave the zone and adventure somewhere else or sign off the game entirely. Periodically, the tree will grow one of the following. Mature Thane fruit, Elder Thane Fruit, Celestial Thane Fruit, or if you're really lucky, a Ripened Heart, a powerful relic and one that I've been using for quite a while. These fruit mimic the Challenger's prime perk, Die Hard, which grants you a second shot at life after being downed. It's a powerful consumable that you can only hold one of at a time. The good news is that the tree will continue to grow fruit, so long term, you'll have an endless supply. Just continue picking them if you're searching for a specific one to grow. If you already have one in your inventory, you'll get scrap instead. Once you defeat the Corruptor in any run that you still have an audience with the Empress, head back to the Red Throne to claim victory. While talking to the Queen, be cordial so as to not mess up the final step of the quest line. You should be choosing options such as Long Live Her Permanence and Kneel to be in good graces. Picking these options should reward you with the Seal of the Empress, a ring that increases max health by 20, but reduces max stamina by 10. The ring is a decent consolation prize, but the real reward is just a few steps away. Head back outside away from the Red Throne and turn into the library to your right. With the Seal of the Empress equipped, the seal on the floor will illuminate and a hidden passageway will reveal itself. Climb down the ladder and claim your final prize for its scattergun. This item, along with a number of other pieces of gear, are required to unlock the mysterious glitching door in the Labyrinth. If you're looking to unlock the 11th archetype in Remnant 2, check out this video, which walks you through every step. A seemingly simple task, defeat the Corruptor, is anything but straightforward in the world of Remnant 2. But we hope this Secrets of the Red Empress guide helped you collect some incredible loot and experience some of the coolest secrets in all of the game. Friends, we hope you take some time to hunt down every piece of gear hidden around Yasha. You better believe there's more to find and we'll be with you every step of the way. So if you appreciate all the work that goes into creating these videos, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It means a lot and goes a long way to helping out the channel. You can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games and enter for your chance to win tons of free prizes. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.